Looking at our world from a theological perspective, this is the Theology Central Podcast, making Theology Central. Good evening, everyone. It is Sunday, October the 30th, 2022. It is currently 10.34 p.m. Central Time, and I'm coming to you live from the Theology Central Studio located right here in Abilene, Texas. October the 31st, 1517. Anyone who's been a Christian for any length of time, you're very familiar with that date, October the 31st, 1517. You're very familiar with it. You know it. You've heard the sermons about it. You all know that October the 31st is Reformation Day. It's a day we talk about Martin Luther. We talk about the Protestant Reformation October 31st, 1517, right? We, we all talk so much about that. And sometimes I think we, we may look at it as, oh, that's a day, you know, where the product, you know, we broke away from the Roman Catholic Church and the Roman Catholic Church lost its power and its authority. And we, we, bro- we threw off the bondage of Roman Catholicism and Roman Catholicism was declared to be the heresy that it was. And, and, and we talk about theology and doctrine and 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 it can be it can be all it can almost be our team versus that team it can be you know theoretical it can be theological it can be historical but i think sometimes we forget that october 31st 1517 before it's theological before it's historical before it's it's anything else before it's theoretical before it's anything else it's personal it's very personal because the whole thing, October 31st, 1517, really comes down to one man. One sinful man. One very sinful man. One man who was so aware of his own sin that he was broken. He was bothered. He was destroyed. And he cried out and confessed and confessed and confessed his sin. But no matter how hard he tried, no matter how hard he could try, no matter what he sought for peace or comfort, he kept realizing over and over and over again that he was a sinner and that he fell short of the holy standard of God. He realized that, that, there, that there was nothing he could do. No matter how hard he tried to be good, to be right, to be godly, he fell short over and over and over and over and over and over again. He was very aware of his own sin, painfully aware of his own sin. Some could say he was obsessed with his sin. He was painfully aware of his failure. And on October 31st, 1570, He discovered, he realized that his only hope was not found in his efforts, wasn't found in the church, it was found in Christ. It was found in grace. It was found in faith. His only hope was outside of himself. His only hope was in Christ and him alone. That was his only hope. He came to a stark realization that he could not look to himself because he was a sinner. He was, he, that's all he was, was, and there was nothing he could do. There was nothing he could do to be made right before a holy God. There was nothing he could do to be cl- declared just before a holy God. And once he realized that it's by faith, it's by an alien righteousness, it's by an imputed righteousness, it has nothing to do with himself, he, in a sense, felt set free. He, he experienced, in a sense, peace. And I don't know if we, sometimes when it, October 31st, 1517, I don't know if we truly appreciate that and forget just appreciating it on October 31st, 1517. I don't know if we appreciate it day after day, week after week. I think in some cases we take it for granted. Oh, we know to say the right words. We're saved by grace alone, through faith alone, because of Christ alone. Amen. Oh, let's sing a praise song about it. Amen. We know the right words. 
but I think we take it for granted. I don't think we truly understand how amazing that God would justify sinners, not not because of anything we do, but purely on his grace, his mercy, his love, purely because of the finished work of his son, Jesus Christ. That you and I, sinners, still sinners, still sin, still with a sinful nature. We fall short every single day, every minute of every day. We fall short every minute of every day. We are sinning and are sinners. But yet we stand before God declared to be perfectly righteous, perfectly holy, not because of anything in ourselves, but because a righteousness has been accredited to our account, a perfect righteousness. So we stand before God declared to be holy and right and perfect and justified. And it has nothing to do with what we can or cannot do or how hard we try. We can't do anything. It's completely a work of God done for us. But we take it for granted. Now, it's, what did I say? Ten, it's about 1040 p.m. Central Time here in West Texas. And I've been sitting here in the Theology Central Studios for, I don't know, maybe 30 minutes, 40 minutes. And I've been reading uh, the works of Martin Luther. I've been reading a a book he wrote on confession soon after, I think, October 31st, 1517. And then I think in 1519, he kind of read, I don't know, kind of a new edition of the book. And and there's a lot there that's really powerful about sin and confession and, 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 and justification and God's righteousness. It's just... It's a, it's a beautiful ch- number of chapters. And I was sitting there reading that, and I kept thinking, you know, it's, well, before I know it, it'll be midnight, and it'll be October the 31st here in West Texas. It'll be Reformation Day. Some people listening right now, it may be already Reformation Day. October 31st, I know Christians want to run around and yell and scream and fight over Halloween. I, I don't understand that. It's, it's a day that we should be thinking about the greatest thing that we can think about, that we as sinners can be just before a holy God, and it has nothing to do with ourselves. So I kept debating with myself, do I turn on the microphone? Do I turn on the microphone and talk about October 31st? October 31st in 1517 and Luther and, and the Reformation. And what, what could I say? What could I add to it? I'm like, well, I could read, I could read some of these chapters from Luther on, on confession and the confessional. And I think that would be good. And it would be historical and theological. But I'm like, yeah, but I don't know. I, I kept debating with myself. And then I looked over. And I saw a news story that I had opened on my iPad. I'd shared it with everyone in the Discord channel. Powerball jackpot grows to an estimated $1 billion. The Powerball jackpot, it's like the, it's the lottery here in the United States of America. You go to a convenience store for those who are listening in other countries and you buy a ticket. And you have these numbers and they call out the Powerball jackpot numbers. And if you have the right numbers, boom, you win. Well, they've been calling them out and calling me out. No one has won. And so now the jackpot is up to one. I, I want you to hear that again. Billion, not million, billion dollars. And so the, the news story reads like this. One lucky lotto player could be in for a very big treat on Halloween night as the Powerball jackpot grows to an estimated $1 billion with the next drawing on Monday. So the drawing will be on Reformation Day. So then I started thinking. $1 billion or justification. $1 $1 billion or to be declared just and righteous before a holy God. Now, I know, I know the right answer. I know, I know what I'm supposed to say. It's a Christian podcast. I'm, a, I'm supposed to say justification, the justification before God. Yes, that's far greater, far more glorious, far more, far greater than $1 billion. It's, and, and I know all the right words I'm supposed to say. Look, if there's anything you know as a Christian, you learn the right words. You know what you're supposed to say. You know what you're supposed to feel. But I, 
sometimes I think that it is we 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 can't stop ourselves from just saying pretending. I, I think it's, it's like sometimes I think Christianity is nothing more than performance art, where we all dress up and we all know what we're supposed to say. But I don't like I don't like dress up. I don't like performance art when it comes to theology and Christianity. So I was sitting here. I'm like, okay, justification. Justification is the doctrine that God pardons, accepts, and declares a sinner to be just on the basis of Christ's righteousness, which results in God's peace, Holy Spirit, and salvation. Justification is by grace through faith in Jesus Christ, apart from all works and merit of the sinner. That's beautiful. That's amazing. I love that doctrine. I love it. I I, I love the reality more than the doctrine. I cherish it. But one billion dollars? Now, my theological mind, all my Christianity tells me, I would prefer justification. But there, my flesh says, hmm, $1 billion. Yeah, $1 billion. I know what I'll do. I'll get in my car really quick. The, the convenience store is what? Two blocks away from my house. I go to the end of the housing development, take a left, go through the light take a quick right. It's right there. It's probably two, maybe two and a half blocks, three blocks from where I am sitting right here in the Theology Central Studios. I could run in there, buy a couple of Powerball tickets, four, five, and then tomorrow night just be waiting when they call out that number. What if I won a billion dollars? And then I start thinking, man, think of all the good things I could do. Oh, for the podcast. Oh, man, I would be the, it would be the greatest theology podcast. I'd have the best computer, the best microphone. We could be on every platform. I could give away hundreds and hundreds of books. We could do this. We, we could, oh, oh, and I could do this for the church. And oh, man, I, I, I all these things I could do. I could help people. Yeah, I, 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 I try to, I, of course, you start trying to convince yourself of all the good things you could do. But there's deep down, I'm like, I know the things I want to do. Oh, I would go here and I would do this and I'd get a new car. And I, I, would, I, I, would, I would hire someone to, to decorate and uh, uh, remodel uh, my studio up here. Oh, I, I would do, oh, I, I, and then I start realizing, man, there's a lot I would want to do just for me. But then I really started thinking about it. If I'm honest with myself, I think $1 billion dollars. I would rejoice in $1 billion more than I've ever rejoiced in my justification. I think on a daily basis, I rejoice and get excited about things not related to my justification. I think I get, I, I, I will, one little thing goes wrong, I get mad and I get frustrated and I forget my justification. I'll give you an example today. I tried to do a live broadcast. We've been having internet problems. I had to stop the broadcast, delete it, got all frustrated, got mad. Then I did, did, did the broadcast, and in the broadcast, I mispronounced a Greek word. The last part of the Greek word is me, and I kept saying may, so I, I messed it up. I think it's on, and I kept, or on, and I kept saying an. Oh, I could, I could help break down the entire Greek word, but I kept, I, I messed it up. So all day I've been bothered and bothered and bothered. And I have been thinking about deleting it and deleting it. And then I got ready to start this program and I looked over and once again, the internet's having some issues and I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. So I get so frustrated. In other words, I can get frustrated over the smallest things that I, that I, I'm not like the rejoicing over my justification just gets forgotten because I'm getting frustrated over little things. In other words, the the joy of justification is not great enough to keep me from being, I don't know, frustrated with the smallest things. But if I won a billion dollars, <laughs> yeah, I know. I wonder, I wonder how long it would take till the little thing started bothering me again, right? I mean, I just won a billion dollars. It would probably be a long time before I start worrying about, well, oh boy, I mispronounced a Greek word on a podcast. Who cares, right? Oh, wait, the internet, the internet's not working. I know what I'll do. I'll buy the internet company and make them make sure that my internet never goes out. I mean, who knows what I would do? One billion dollars or justification. I just feel that in my life, I constantly forget the, the amazing gift of being justified before a holy God. And I look to fleshly, earthly things. That's what I desire. 
That's what I want. That's what I pursue. That's what I think about. And here's this gracious gift of justification that October 31st, 1517 reminds me of, right? It's not about power and and control. It's, it's, It's all the things that we may get discussed. It's about the simple, a sinful man. October 31st, 1517 is about a sinful, 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 sinful German Catholic monk sinful, ungodly, deserving of hell, realizing his only hope was not found in him. It wasn't found in anything but in the finished work of Jesus Christ. And he felt that and understood that. And and therefore now in Christ, there is no condemnation. And now we have peace with God. We have a, a peace and there's joy because there is now no condemnation for those of us who are in Christ Jesus. One billion dollars or justification. I'm not going to ask the foolish question, which one would you choose? Because I know what you would tell me. Come on. I'm I'm going to be talking to mainly Christians. Everyone's going to say, of course I would choose justification because eternity is far greater and far longer than those life on this earth. I know all the right words. You know all the right words. One billion dollars? And, and, and the reason I keep saying one billion dollars is because Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday of every day of your life, I guarantee you so many times the things of this world far greater moves you, concerns you than justification. Justification is something that was great, but we take it for granted. It's something gone, something in the past. It was wonderful, but we have forgotten it. October 31st, 2022. I hope you spend some time considering the beautiful gift of justification by grace alone, through faith alone, because of Christ alone, not based on anything you can do, should do, would do, hope to do, may, may, you may do, It's all because of Christ. I know Christians love to throw rules at you and say, well, if you don't do this or do this, it proves you're not saved. Don't let people destroy your joy. Don't let people destroy your hope. Don't let the church, the church in some cases, I think the the greatest enemy to peace and joy and salvation is the church itself. Christians want to run around and go, well, yeah, I don't know if you can, I, you're, I don't know if you can be saved. I don't know if you can be saved because you do. They want to point to your actions. They want to point to what you do. Stop listening to them. Look to what Christ has done for you. Rest in that. Rejoice in that. Be grateful for that. L- Christians can threaten you, point the finger at you, and say, "Well, you can, you you did this and you failed here." And you, they, they 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 will condemn. They they look Christianity. Christians walk around with a a bag full of rocks, ready to throw at someone and say, "You're probably not saved. You're probably not saved." No, no, no. You say, "No, no, no." You 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 can put your rocks away because my salvation is not based on what I do, could do, should do, may do. It's it's based off what Christ has already done. He has paid for all of my sin. His righteousness has been imputed to me. So I stand without sin before him, no matter how many sins you can condemn me for or point to me at. Now, I don't say it excuses our sin, but everybody wants to point to some kind of action as proof of salvation. The only action that proves my salvation is the action of Jesus Christ hanging on a cross, paying for every one of my sins. That's far greater than a billion dollars. But yet, sometimes the billion dollars, sometimes just life every day becomes more precious, find more joy, more concern, and more worry about that. Just some late night thoughts. Just some late night thoughts on Reformation Day, which will be here 
shortly. For many p- people, it will be here at about uh, five here in the United States. A lot of people in the United States, it will be midnight here in just a couple of minutes, and it will be Reformation Day. For some of you, maybe a couple of hours away. It's, it's still an hour away from me, but whenever you hear this, happy Reformation Day. Just remember Reformation Day. When everybody's running around on the internet, arguing and fighting and, and having their theological battles, just ignore all, just ignore most of what Christians have to say and just say, it was a day about a sinful man who realized his only hope was in the finished work of Jesus Christ and not in himself. That is what I want you to remember. All right, someone just gave me some thumbs, two thumbs up in the uh, chat, and I greatly appreciate that. And speaking of internet problems, yeah, we're having the internet connection problem again with the Church One app. I have no idea what's going on. I really don't. But I can tell you this. What I should say right now is all I care about is the justification I have in Christ. But there's a part of me now that's going to, going to obsess all night about why that problem is con- persisting and why it will not go away. Because if it continues to persist, I'm going to continue to have problems doing live broadcast. See what bothers me? See what concerns me more? The temporary, not the eternal. And I bet you're a lot like me. Thanks for listening. You can email me, newsif at yahoo.com, newsif at yahoo.com. That's newsif at yahoo.com. God bless.